this is Joe Castellanos of the University of New Mexico, and this awesomely amazing CS for All video is on writing a Hello World program using Turtle Graphics in NetLogo. We will be using NetLogo's integrated develop environment to create a blank project and from scratch make a program and run it. We'll be using Turtle Graphics. The basic metaphor behind Turtle Graphics is kind of shown with this picture. There is a turtle or some creature that's moving around on a flat surface and wherever it moves it can leave a trail. This picture shows a screen capture from NetLogo that's running with five turtles. NetLogo by default draws a turtle as an arrowhead. So five arrowheads started out in the center with different headings and in different colors. The red turtle moved forward that was along this line, and then it turned to the right by 45 degrees and moved forward again. Then it turned to the left and moved forward again, and here's its final position. This slide shows examples of some of the commands that NetLogo uses to manipulate the turtle. This first command, pen down, is metaphorical. There is no physical pen that gets physically moved downward. What it does is tell the computer that any future move commands, like the forward command, should result in a line being drawn wherever the turtle moves. And that will continue until there's pen up command. The set heading command takes a number between 0 and 360, 360 degrees. Both 0 and 360 degrees sets the heading of the turtle pointed upward, and that's the picture that we're seeing right here. Set heading 90 would have the turtle pointed to the left. Set heading 180 would have the turtle pointed downward. The forward to command tells the turtle to move forward at its current heading two steps, and the line you can see drawn from here, and it continues on to the middle of the turtle. The command right 90 tells the turtle to turn to its right by 90 degrees, so now we see its heading has changed. The next command that gets executed is forward 4, so the turtle moves forward four spaces from its previous position onto its new position. After the turtle has moved forward 4, the next command is right 90, so it turns 90 degrees to its right. Notice that 90, the right 90 over here, the turtle had been going up and it turned to my right. The 90 degrees in this statement, the turtle had been going to my right and now it's turning downward on the screen. From the turtle's perspective, both of those are right turns by 90 degrees. After it's turned 90 degrees, it now moves forward eight and that's its final position here. Back here, the forward command caused the turtle to move up. And down here, the forward command caused the turtle to move downward. That's because the forward command is a command that is dependent on the state of the turtle. The state of the turtle back here was its heading was in the upward direction. So moving forward when it was headed upward caused it to go up. And here, the same command of moving forward causes it to go down because its heading is in the downward direction. This slide lists some of the states that a turtle can have. Its shape, which by default is this arrow shape. It can be changed to many other different shapes. The default value is the arrow shape. When you create a turtle, it's given a random color. It's given a random heading. It's set with its pen up. It has a pen size of one. And there's a number, number of other properties that turtles have, which are set by default. This is our last slide before going into NetLogo and actually writing a program. This is a list of turtle graphics commands in order from top to bottom. Before I show you what it actually draws, try and draw it in your mind's eye. And here it is. Makes a spiral moving outward. Each time it turns 90 degrees and each step it makes larger, a step twice as large as its previous step, always turning 90 degrees to the right. So it spirals. Okay, let's get into NetLogo. All right, we start with a blank NetLogo project. Our interface tab is blank and our code tab is blank. All NetLogo programs must have at least one graphical user interface or GUI component because code that we enter in this code tab won't get called unless something in the interface tab is clicked or activated by the user. So we'll start with the interface tab and I'm going to add two buttons. 
there are a number of graphical user interface items that can be selected from on these buttons and click add and add a button. This first button I'm going to name setup. I could name it anything, but I'm going to use this button to set up my program. I'm going to use it to create the turtles that we're going to work with in our program and to give them any initial values. So setup is a good name for it. Click OK. Now, this is colored red and the tab is red. This is because my program now contains an error. If I click on setup, I can get some information about that error. I have a message saying nothing named setup has been defined. I have a button named setup. What that means in NetLogo is that when I run the program and click this setup button, NetLogo is going to look in the code tab for a procedure named setup. And I haven't created that procedure. I'm going to leave that error for now though and make another button. So just click OK. And I'll click the add again and add another button. This one I'm going to call go because I'm going to use the setup button to create my turtle and I'm going to use the go button to move it around. And I can call the go, bu go button perhaps multiple times to keep moving it. In NetLogo, when a programmer creates a button, the programmer can name it pretty much what he or she wants. I chose to call this button Go. I could have called it Bob or Mary or Sue, but there are some things I couldn't have called it. If I called it Setup, for example, there would have been a name clash because I already have a button named Setup. Each button has to be named something different. If I called it Run, I would have had another problem because Run is a reserved word in NetLogo. In a programming language, reserved words are words that in that language have special meaning. Run, for example, is a reserved word in that logo. But Go is not, and so I can name this button Go. After creating these buttons, I can resize them and move them around by dragging across them to select them. If I click in the corners, the black box areas, I can make them bigger. If I click in the gray area, I can move them. So I make them, I'll make both of these buttons the same size, drag across this setup. and have them nicely aligned. Now I want to add some code that will get executed when these buttons are clicked. So I'm going to go over to the code tab. I have a button named setup, so I have to have a procedure name setup. Two, which is a reserved word in that logo to say I'm defining a procedure. Setup. Every procedure has to end with the word end. This is another reserved word in that logo. Notice that when I first typed end, it was indented. And when I finish typing it, NetLogo put it to the edge. Indentation is used to show structure in the language. All the code that goes between the two and the end will be code that's inside the setup procedure. And so all of that code will be indented. Since end is ending the setup procedure, it's at the same level of indenting as the two. And I'm going to come down, skip a few lines, and create a to go for my go button. And also have an end. Now, notice that I have this red on my interface tab. This check means to check the syntax. So I click this and the red went away. And if I go to my interface tab, I'll see that my setup button is no longer red and my go button is no longer red because there is a procedure named setup and go. Right now those procedures are empty. They don't do anything, but they do exist. So it, my program no longer has an error. I'll go back to the code tab and add some content to my setup. I'm going to first clear everything out from previous runs. And the command in NetLogo for that is clear all. Clear all with a dash. Notice I have three different colors in the editor here. To and end are reserved words in the language and they're colored green. Clear all is a procedure that's built into the language, so it's colored blue. Setup is a procedure is a, that I made up. I made up the word setup to, I decided to name my button setup. I could have named it something else. Because I defined it, it's colored black. So reserved words in the language are green, procedures that are predefined are blue, and names, identifiers, variables, and procedure names that I create are, are colored black. Now the next thing I want to do in setup, I clear all, and I'm also going to create a turtle. Create turtle, T-R-T-L-E-S, 
I'm only going to create one of them. It still has to say create turtles because the procedure's name is create turtles. And I'm going to pass it an argument of one, so it will create one turtle. Still need the plural though, because that's the name of the function. And I can click check, and everything's not showing. Nothing is showing an error. Now I can go to the interface tab and run my program. This button setup is selected, so I click somewhere else to get unselected. And now I can click on setup, and it executes the code. Notice that it drew a turtle, a random colored turtle in a a random heading. If I click setup again, it each time I click setup, it calls the code in setup, which clears all, so it erases the previous turtles. It creates a new turtle, and it's going to by default create that turtle with a random heading and in a random color, and always starting in the center at zero zero. So I can click clicking setup and I get these different turtles. Wow. Go still does nothing. So now I'm going to go to my code and add some content to the Go procedure. Within the Go procedure, before I can start using turtle commands such as forward and right, I have to tell NetLogo what it is that I want to be moving forward and right. In this little program, all I have are turtles, but in other programs I might have many agents, many different types of things that could be moved forward or right. So I use the NetLogo command ask turtles. And now I have an open bracket and a closed bracket. This is going to loop through each of the turtles. I only have one right now, but it'll loop through the list of size one. And this open and closed bracket defines the structure. Everything that goes inside these brackets are the things that are going to happen to each turtle. So I'm going to move the turtle forward. One, have it turn right by 45 degrees. Then have it turn left by 45 degrees. And then have it move forward again by one. Okay, and now I can check the syntax to make sure I don't have any errors, no error problems. So I can go to my interface, click setup, and I get my turtle initialized, and click go. I saw no line. That's because I never put the pen down. So I'm going to go back to my code tab. The first thing before moving forward is I'm going to say pen down. I have to do this inside of the turtle block because pen down is one of the attributes of a turtle. If I created many turtles, some of them could have their pens down and some could not have their pens down. If I put this command outside of the ask turtles. NetLogo wouldn't know which turtle it was that I was telling to put its pen down. Inside this structure, this block of code gets execute, executed for each turtle in my list of one. So check syntax again, and I'll go back to interface and click setup. So it puts it back in the center, and I'll click go. And now I can see a line in the made. If I click go again without hitting setup, it's not going to choose a new turtle. It's not going to put it back to the center. It'll continue moving the turtle from where it is right now. So I click go and see it just continued. And each time I click go, it's going to continue. If I click setup, it erases everything, gives me a new turtle in a new random heading with a new random color. And now if I click go, it moves that turtle from that start position. And each time I click go, we go forward. Now we have a working program. So it's time to change it up a little bit and see what we can do in modifications. So I'm going to come over to the code tab. The most obvious thing I think to change is we have create turtles one. What if I change that to a five? Obviously it's going to make five turtles. When I click run, try and visualize in your mind's eye what you'll see on the screen. First I'll click check, and this checks for syntax errors. I don't have any. This only checks for syntax errors, not semantic errors. Syntax errors are errors like grammatical errors. For example, if I had two T's in create, and I go to check syntax, I'm going to get an error because NetLogo doesn't know what this command is with two T's. So I have to take that extra T out 
and now it checks. So that it checks, I find out that I have no syntax errors, but I might still have semantic errors or logic errors. For example, if I want, this draws a zigzag line, and maybe I wanted to draw a house shape. So this would contain an error because it doesn't draw what I wanted to draw, but it doesn't contain any syntax errors. Anyway, let's go to the interface and I'll click setup again. Now we see a big jumble here. There were five turtles created all on top of each other with random colors with random headings. And when I click go, they each move. Click go again and again. When I click setup, there are five new random turtles with five new random colors and five new random headings. And I click go. Okay, so far I've been using the default turtle shape, that little arrow, but we can change those shapes. We can go to the code. In setup, before creating my turtles, after I've cleared everything, but before I create the turtles, I want to change the default shape for my turtles. So set dash default shape of the turtles to and I give it a name of one of the shapes. And there are many shapes. One of them is turtles, or turtle, actually, without an S. Now I can check syntax. Looks good. Go to interface, click setup, and click go. And now I have little turtle shapes. Going back to the code tab, we can see an interesting distinction between when we get a syntax error and when we get a runtime error. For example, changing turtles here by adding an extra T, if I check syntax, I get a syntax error because NetLogo is expecting an identifier here and turtles hasn't, the two T's hasn't been defined. So if I get rid of that extra T, everything checks. But this word turtle is in quotation marks. If I add an extra T here, and check. So now the syntax checks just fine, but if I go to interface and click setup, I get a runtime error. And it wasn't able to find this shape. The difference is that the first turtles is an identifier that's built into the language. The second turtles, second turtle, is a quoted string that gets looked up during runtime. Dismiss this and get rid of the T, and everything runs. will run fine now. There are lots of other shapes I mentioned before, and one way to find them is to go to the internet. I went to an internet browser. In the Google search engine, I typed NetLogo shapes, and the first hit is a NetLogo user manual on shapes. Click on that, and there describes how to use them and how to edit them so I can make custom shapes. And it shows me the default shapes that are included in NetLogo. And it, down below, it tells me their names, which is important, because that's the part that has to go in that quoted string. The way I got this turtle shape was by writing turtle. And it has what, was, what is written in that quoted string has to match exactly the name here. Where it's circle two, it has to be circle with a space in the two. Some of these are all gray, and some have gray with some color. When you set the color of the turtle, the gray parts will be whatever the color of the line is. The colored parts stay that color. So if I am drawing with the flower shape and I have a purple line, the petals will be purple, but the stem and leaves would stay green. And as we scroll down, there are other shapes that can be downloaded and added in. And there's lots of third parties that have created shapes and you can create your own as well.